try to be as brief as possible. Um, thank you for the invitation. Thank you to the chair and co-chair and uh, to Dr. Harry especially for inviting me um, and to all the audience and the co-speakers. I will share my presentation. Um, can you see it? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Um, well, first of all, I want to introduce myself. Uh, I am actually a social anthropologist and uh, more engaged to Ayurveda as a scholar of uh, medical anthropology. Nevertheless, I have a personal experience with uh, yoga and, and Ayurveda since 2000. I started practicing yoga when I was pregnant, actually. And then uh, I, my first uh, knowledge of Ayurveda was from Chile, from the yoga networks. Uh, and I decided to study this um, online course by the, Dr. Froley as a way to know better and more about this uh, medical system. I got this counseling uh, degree um, and then with the Ayurveda Prema Foundation in Buenos Aires, I had the opportunity to uh, do some practice because I was traveling to Buenos Aires three times in a year and we were treating patients in, with the guidance of the, of the senior uh, practitioners and Vaidyas. So this was between 2004 and 2008, more or less. Um, but my main uh, path has been uh, from anthropology. So I went to Heidelberg uh, in an, and uh, for the Mahasa, for the master's study, I did my um, research on Ayurveda in India, modern Ayurveda, with the help of Dr. Hari, who received me in the um, Naya Society Hospitals in Kerala. And later, uh, my PhD on uh, integrative medicine in Chile. And uh, I want to make a point about this because it engages with what uh, Dr. Simon and Dr. Uh, um, Bolgeli mentioned at the beginning. Um, my main question was, what is the gap that the practice and use of complementary and alternative medicines uh, is filling here in Chile and my results show that they have on the one hand a very strong political meaning uh, in terms of practicing this um, cognitive justice that Dr. Fugli mentioned, uh, practicing pluralism and diversity in medicine. Um, on the other hand, the the evidence that biomedicine is not being able to cure some um, existential ailments, right? Wants uh, produced by the political history, by society, by the living experience in the living experience of the population, and complementary and alternative medicines uh, provide this narrative, integrative, holistic approach to the health, disease, uh, attention and prevention process that is, uh, this is how Eduardo um, Menendez uh, called the process, right? Um, so, 
After that, I have become a lecturer in medical anthropology for undergraduate and uh, postgraduate students. And from there, I teach this medical anthropology uh, approach to medicine and to healthcare in general, um, including this approach to diversity and pluralism. And in this part of my lecturing, I do teach uh, some general um, um, view of Ayurveda, which is important here because it contributes to this uh, um, understanding of the healthcare system and healthcare practice as something that is more diverse than just biomedicine and just evidence-based medicine in general, right? So from here I will, um, and these are my students, this is what we do right now with the syndemic, <laughs> everything is online. I teach uh, medicine students, uh, speech and hearing students, and these are the um, my current um, um, uh, the, the students making their thesis, right, on, on, on healthcare politics. It works, it's possible. <laughs> I will uh, speak about the background of the Chilean healthcare system, where, what is the place for medical pluralism in the Chilean, Chilean healthcare system, uh, what is the place uh, of Ayurveda in this uh, system, and uh, what is in general the place of medical for medical pluralism and uh, Ayurveda in the training and practice, right? Mm -hmm. Please keep this in mind. This is an overview of the Chilean healthcare system, which has these two uh, dimensions, right? On the one hand, you have the public system, which is um, funded and supervise from the from the from the design, from the funding, from the delivering um, by the state, by the health ministry, um, the, the healthcare network uh, under secretary of the ministry, and people here right pay seven percent of their salaries for the public funding for the public insurance, which is for NASA and access for free to um, healthcare in the three levels, primary healthcare, um, specialists and hospital care. On the other hand, since the constitution of 1980, which was written under dictatorship, uh, health, healthcare was opened to the um, uh, free market, right? And these private insurances and private providers uh, grow, right? So you may also, uh, when you sign your contract, you may um, choose if you want to go to the public funding with your 7% or if you want to pay for an insurance program of one of these uh, private insurance institutions. And this gives you access, provides access to um, private uh, physicians, private specialists. You just go as a customer and um, ask for an, an appointment and to private hospitals, which are, the facilities are more comfortable and they are less crowded than the, than the, the public ones. And we, the, the armed forces have a special um, system, 3% of the population are here. Uh, they have their own, um, insurance, their own hospitals and their own system. And you can also, of course, pay out of pocket and go privately to any of this. This is important because the place where both traditional and complementary and alternative medicines uh, can find a place, a way in Chile, depend on in which one of these two sectors it enters or three, right? So. No insurance is covering any of these non-biomedical medicines now. So this is something to be addressed. And uh, no provider is openly uh, offering complementary and alternative medicines in any way. 
only traditional medicine, which I will explain uh, in what comes, uh, is provided in primary health care um, through the municipalities <laughs> uh, in the public sector because of politics. So what happens is that some physicians and some other healthcare professionals who do know and practice, for example, acupuncture, uh, Reiki, um, Bach flowers, or some of Ayurveda as well, and who work in the public sector, they may use these therapies by their own, because basically, as they are physicians, they can do whatever they want, and they include it in their practice. But it's very unofficial and um, uh, not regulated. And in the private sector, we will find that the same happens um, and that the healthcare teams, both in the public and in the private sector, use some of these complementary and alternative medicines for themselves. Like the, like the course where I teach, right? Mindfulness for healthcare professionals uh, to um, handle burnout, basically, uh, and other ailments. So just to, to, to give you a glance of that, almost 80% of the population is under the public insurance. So accessing to the public healthcare services or paying uh, a special fee if they want to go to the private. And 50% of the population uh, is into this uh, um, private system, right? So, first of all, I need to explain uh, how is medical diversity uh, present and organized in Chile is similar to what Dr. Mota explained uh, for Brazil. Uh, we have different kinds of diversities in the system. Not recognized, the system is basically biomedical, but present anyway, in practice. On the one hand, we have the traditional medical systems, which are identified as traditional because they belong to the culture of the indigenous communities of Chile. These indigenous communities are acknowledged by law since 1993, and they are Mapuche, Aymara, Rapa Nui, which is, which is from Easter Island. They are the, the bigger ones, the, 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 the more uh, important in terms of, of population and, and presence all over the country. Atacameño, Quechua, Coya, and Daguita, which are in the north of Chile, in the desert, basically, and Kawashkar and Yamana in the very south. So, since this is a knowledge by law, in the public, uh, healthcare system uh, sector um, and in primary healthcare there are practitioners right so I will show you some pictures uh, in the following um, they are allowed to practice and it's a, a right for the people uh, a knowledge as members of these communities to get both biomedical and uh, native medicine Native medicines here are, as Dr. Mota explained for Brazil, basically shamanic medicine um, with ritual healings that include not only the ill person, but the community, the human community and the non-human community, the territory, the geography, the plants and the spirits, of course, and uh, herbal medicine. Okay? On the other hand, we have all these other medical systems that are not biomedicine and not indigenous medi medicines, which include homeopathy, traditional Chinese medicine in the form of acupuncture. These are well known in Chile and knowledge. Uh, anthroposophical medicine, which is fully private. Synthetic medicine, which is a med medicine um, created in Colombia which is very interesting because it is a mixture of biomedicine, indigenous medicine, and sort of Tibetan or Ayurvedic medicine. Uh, this is also practiced as a private medicine, 
uh, which is not uh, inexpensive to pay, but they do some service. They travel through Chile and work together with the shamans of Mapuche or Rapa Nui or Aymara, uh, traditional medicines, uh, and also with agents of popular medicine, and they do some service in... Excuse uh, me, Dr. Patricia. Uh, we have about four minutes, so just so that you have uh, that intimation. Okay, 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 okay. okay. And, be, and besides the medical systems, you, the other therapies like Reiki yoga, energetic medicine, are a knowledge. And Ayurveda is still somewhere in between of these two uh, levels, right? And on the third uh, level, uh, popular medicine, which is mestizo medicine, mixing. Uh, native and uh, also European popular medicine. So, what is the place of these medicines in the uh, Chilean uh, healthcare system? There are two under secretariats. One is the public health secretariat in charge of the policing, and traditional medicines are in a department for indigenous communities and interculturality. As I said, they they provide intercultural health in the public sector. And complementary and alternative medicines belong to this department for pharmaceutical regulation uh, and uh, complementary and alternative medicines. And this department is the one that acknowledges and certifies some medicines, basically homeopathy, acupuncture, and naturopathy. There is a board of uh, practitioners uh, specialist scholars who advised the health ministry and uh, have designed an examination, an exam that certifies the uh, therapists uh, as uh, 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 good uh, practitioners of these medicines, right? But in the under secretariat in charge of delivering healthcare, complementary and alternative medicines disappear. And as I said before, it depends on the private decisions of any member of the healthcare team. Uh, only traditional medicine has a right to be here in the primary healthcare division, right? So where is the place for Ayurveda here? I just want to introduce very briefly some history from my research, uh, I um, interview this physician. She's a biomedical physician, a pediatrician. Dr. Urrutia was the first one um, engaging with Ayurveda through the Maharishi centers in Europe. And she practices in her private uh, praxis uh, in a very low uh, profile way. Some years later, um, starting in Colombia and then arriving to Chile, this uh, Mauricio Leon, which is uh, a Vaidya trained in Gujarat uh, Ayurvedic University, started to promote Ayurveda more, more openly. He went to congresses, he speak, uh, spoke about Ayurveda, uh, he's practicing, he's training people. and. We, all, we also have this uh, very uh, um, extensive uh, offer of Ayurveda as an alternative therapy uh, with the beautiful Shirodara um, um, picture, yeah, right, presenting Ayurveda as a soft and gentle medicine. Basically, Ayurveda is related here with uh, nourishment, with diet. Um, well, detox diet is very popular with uh, wellness, right? Uh, Ayurveda and beauty, facial Ayurveda. And uh, this Vaidya Mauricio Leon, who is engaged in spreading Ayurveda, is trying to in, uh, incorporate Ayurveda in the current public health problems. So they created uh, an Ayurvedic uh, guide for uh, dealing with the COVID uh, syndemic, right? pointing to lifestyle, to diet uh, in a more comprehensive way. Regarding the training, you can find this um, more or less serious uh, trainings, uh, introductory trainings um, in some institutions. 
this counseling or education trainings as the one I did uh, are still there, not pretending to train you as a Vaidya as, or as a therapist, but more like a counselor or an educator. Ayurveda as an uh, upgrading course for nourishment. Um, Ayurveda related to yoga is very popular. The yoga uh, commodities here offer Ayurveda as well, the talks always. Uh, and But we also find this very open and suspicious uh, Intensive Ayurveda online offers uh, everywhere. Cooperation with India, you have what the what the institution from the Vaidya Leon does, right? They bring their students to India, um, and Ayurveda is another institution which has this uh, alliance not only with India but also with the, one of the universities here in Chile, which is engaging with teaching. Uh, integrative medicine as part of their uh, biomedical training, right, for the for the medical students. So here, the Universidad of Santiago, right, has this uh, joint uh, work with Ayurveda, um, bringing um, uh, speakers from India. Okay, uh, Patricia, we have crossed twenty minutes. I'm so sorry. We need to wrap up in the next fifteen seconds. But I didn't, I, sorry, but I need to finish. Give me. Please give me one or two minutes left, right? Okay. Um, because my point as a medical anthropologist is to uh, highlight that when we teach Ayurveda, we, when we explain Ayurveda, I teach it in my courses in the University of Chile and in the University of Universidad de Desarrollo, is to teach about um, diversity about the right for diversity to understand that health and healthcare is uh, more than just biomedicine. And through this, we are teaching our students uh, in um, pluralism, right? Which was called cognitive justice here. So this is the last one, right? The opportunities for Ayurveda in Chile is, are, for example, the growing interest for training and therapy the fact that the Ministry of Health is more or less open to a knowledge medicines other than uh, biomedicine. The physicians have a highly high interest in knowing other medical systems and Ayurveda have been uh, invited as guest speaker to um, the hospitals and to um, physicians meetings to explain what Ayurveda is. And the fact that we teach medical anthropology in most of the biomedicine uh, training programs where we can show this. The challenges are how these private training and teaching, teaching programs are um, regulated. The Ministry of Health does not know Ayurveda well yet, so it's a point, it's a, it's a problem of, of politics, as Dr. Simon said, to push to make it a knowledge. Uh, if a knowledge, the way the Ministry of Health acknowledges uh, other medicines is as assistant health pro professions, always depending and subordinated to biomedicine. The pharmaceutical regulations in Chile do restrict the entrance of uh, remedies. And uh, of course, the inequalities of the Chilean healthcare system, how far do we want to uh, um, foster Ayurveda as another medicine for the elite? Or will we uh, foster it as another medicine that can contribute to a knowledge, uh, both domestic and foreigner diversities uh, gathering here in Chile? So this was my presentation.